Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a um, webinar, some people call these things, some people webcasts, online show. Um, nobody can agree on the terminology and some people have uh, strong feelings about some of the terminology, but whatever you want to describe this as, um, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is posted onto our website for you to watch later. And I'll show you at the end of today's episode where you can go and see all of our archives. Both our live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So if you have any colleagues, um, friends, neighbors, family, anybody really who's interested in any of the topics we have on the show, let them know. Uh, send them to our website. They can sign up and watch any of our upcoming shows or watch any of our recordings. Um, we do have recordings available uh, going all the way back to the beginning of the show, which is uh, January 2009. So there is some old stuff on there, some archival things. Some, some things may be outdated, but you know, we're librarians, so that's what we do. We archive and save things. So you know, be aware when you're watching something how old it might be. Um, but we have new things added every week. No. Um, <laughs> We do a, um, both the recording is posted on, on, on there. Um, if there are any handouts or slides, like the presentation we have here today, that's included. And any um, websites that are mentioned in the show um, by any of our presenters, I save into our delicious account. But we collect all um, bookmarks that we've made of different websites, and that's made available to you as well. So you have access to everything after the show. <clears throat> uh, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, interviews, book reviews, demos, uh, sometimes little mini training sessions. We only have an hour or so, not anything incredibly in-depth. Um, the only criteria really is that it is something uh, related to libraries, something libraries are actually doing, um, a product or service we think they might um, benefit from, um, sometimes things a little out of the box. Uh, you might see some titles of some of our shows and you're like, I don't get it. What, why is the Library Commission, the Rascal Library Commission doing this? But trust me, everything comes around to libraries in the end. <laughs> That's my only criteria um, for the show. Um, we do have um, guest speakers that come in sometimes to do presentations, but we also have our own Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions for us here on Encompass Live, and that's what we have this morning. To my left here is Craig Leftroff. He is our uh, Technology Innovation Librarian at the Library Commission. Good morning, Craig. Good morning. <laughs> and he um, organizes, coordinates, runs, I don't know what the term is, <laughs> is in charge, fun. yeah, our Nebraska Libraries on the Web um, project, uh, which is about WordPress sites um, for public libraries. And I'm just going to hand it over to you to explain what it's all about and okay. how um, libraries can use it. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm not going to PowerPoint you guys to death, but I do have a <laughs> few slides that I wanted to show you just to give you a feel for what the you know network entails and what, what I do. Um, mm -hmm. I am more or less the sort of customer service side of our project, so I help libraries build their websites, I help them uh, find plugins to meet their needs, and I also create the new sites and work with libraries to essentially shape those into what they need to serve their <clears throat> patrons or customers. Um, just to let you know in advance of any questions, I don't do anything with the server. <laughs> So yeah. I'm not the tech guy. If you have any questions about that sort of thing, I can certainly get answers for you, but not today. I'll mm -hmm. have to get back to you. So um, This is how our main page looks. We are a network of websites provided to the Nebraska libraries at no cost. Um, we currently have over 100 sites. Those oh, wow. do include uh, a few in-house sites, so we can do plug-in testing or mm -hmm. have pages for training and things like that. Otherwise, it's strictly for Nebraska public libraries or the public library systems here in the state. And right now we have 230 users on the network. Those have different levels of um, power. They range from the super admins who can more or less do anything to people who are subscribers and they're just essentially consumers. They can only get the information that's posted on the sites. <clears throat> so quite a lot um, on our network. It runs pretty well given the demands. Um, it's been running for seven years now, and 
one thing that is different for us compared to other WordPress multi-site networks is we run on a Windows server. I think that's probably still, you know, a rarity with WordPress. Uh, um, most people go with Linux servers, but is that? I know mean, you said you don't know much about servers. That right. I think that's a state thing. I know the state of Nebraska is very Windows centric. I so believe we may you're be correct. Restricted by them, mm -hmm. so not by choice that we're necessarily on. <laughs> Right. But we're working with it. Yeah, it sure. works, obviously. Yeah, most of the time yeah. it's fine. Um, <laughs> it does make it a little more interesting when something goes wrong. It's harder to find stuff just by searching on the internet for um, Windows Server, you know, uh -huh. fixes and things like that. But you know, yeah. keeps things exciting. <laughs> um, this is how we make a new site. We have a plugin which I'll address in a minute called NS Cloner. So we essentially have a default site set up that has a lot of content already populated. We just make a copy of that, and then I work with the libraries from there to build it into the form that they want. So this is the default site. Mm -hmm. When we make a clone, this is how the clone looks. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, we can go in and adjust the theme, the theme being basically what controls the look and the feel of each site. Um, so they start off with 2010, but if they want, we can switch it over to something else, like one of these other very colorful options. Mm -hmm. um, this is the theme that's running on our main page, as you'll see in a moment. We can go really out there with a the theme. There are all kinds of different options. And with each theme, you get uh, different capabilities. So some themes, you can only change the text or the colors, but some themes allow you to manipulate every aspect of mm -hmm. the site. So you can do social icons, as you can see, graphics, uh, menus, widgets, and so on. You can get really creative with it if you want to really dive in there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things I really like about our library sites. You can see a lot of diversity between the sites. Everybody has their own take on what they're doing and what they want their patrons to see. Mm -hmm. So the look and the feel changes quite a bit from site to site. Um, if None of our themes works for a library. I can create a child theme, which basically takes the existing theme that, that controls the, the site's look and feel and adds some additional functionality. So if they don't like um, that particular image at the top right there, we can change it and keep everything else the same mm -hmm. just by creating a child theme. Um, basically, it just inherits everything. I add some CSS to change the look and feel, and then we go from there. Okay, I did mention plugins a second ago, so I wanted to address that. Those are basically tools that let us expand the functionality of a particular site, so they can do all kinds of different things. They can block um, malicious queries, hackers, and stuff like that. They can add calendars, they can add weather, Pinterest buttons, Facebook buttons, all that sort of stuff. Um, one of the ones that we use for our site is WordFence, which is a security plugin. And what it does is basically, if somebody tries to use a particular username to kind of keep hacking away at our login to try mm -hmm. to get into our site, after a certain amount of failed attempts, it will lock them out. So um, we don't have a username Logmeyer on our site. That kind of <laughs> made me laugh, but you know. Um, it also tells me where these attacks are coming from, and a lot of them are actually from Eastern Europe, sadly uh -huh. enough. It's my ancestry, so. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, it's my relative. Yeah, it's my fault. That's common, though, yeah. And that, I'm sure people are thinking, why would they care about these little sites in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. But. Well, a lot of these programs are automated, so they mm -hmm. just find, you know, they kind of blindly go out and look for any WordPress site. Right. Once they find one, it's like, try to get Maybe in. Maybe this one we can break into and do something. Yeah, like yeah. I've had questions from libraries about why would they want to attack us. We don't have credit card information <laughs> yeah. or banking, but, you know, sometimes it's just automated. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just the reasons they do it isn't always to get your banking or private information. It's just sometimes hackers do this for the thrill sure. of doing it. Um, and they never know which site's going to have the good information, too. It's it's a, it's a fishing out for anything, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Now, WordFence, that's across any site that we host. We automatically put that on. It is, okay. yes. Um, and we do additional security measures. We have um, some things that happen at the server level, and we also do periodic backups. So in the worst case, we'd be able to restore the original 
inform the site. Another plugin that we use is Jetpack, um, which does a whole lot of different things. WordFence is essentially just a security plugin, but Jetpack does a myriad of things. Um, it has that protection functionality, so it protects against hackers as well. Uh, it also does sharing and publicizing, which is important to some of our libraries. They have Facebook pages, they have Pinterest pages, or Twitters, and they don't want to um, have to duplicate all that content manually. So Jetpack pushes the stuff out to all these different places. They only have to type, you know, their winter hours or about a special program one time, and it goes to all these various places. Um, it also adds functionality for the end users. So if people are reading a post about a, a children's program and they want to share it with their friends on Facebook, they can just mm -hmm. click the share button and it goes right out. Easy push to Facebook. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the end of the slide portion. Are there any questions so far? Well, I don't know. Anybody have any questions about the basics of what we're offering here? Now you're going to have to see live demo of all mm -hmm. these yeah. things. So <laughs> go so. ahead and type anything in if you do as, as Craig's continuing along. Just to give you guys a feel for the whole security side, um, I cleaned out our spam folder yesterday for the main site, and mm -hmm. in just a second you'll see there's already 33 comments from people. Wow. Yeah, just over the course of a day. When I come back from the weekends lately, it's around 100. So we have all these bots for hitting mm -hmm. us and uh, either trying to get into the site or just leaving ridiculous off-topic spam. Mm -hmm. With links to malicious sites that they want you to click on and go to. That right, exactly. For... Yep, um, but with our site, you basically have a one-button option to empty the spam, so you don't necessarily have to go through all this stuff, you know, trying to sell you gold from France or whatever. <laughs> um, you can just say empty spam, and it takes care of it for you. Now, is this something libraries do themselves, or you do this on behalf of them for their, their own site? They uh, would have to do this themselves. Okay. Fortunately, they don't get hit with quite as much as we do mm -hmm. here at the main site for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So ordinarily, they'll just have you know, one or two spam comments over the mm -hmm. course of a few weeks. Yeah. And comments are something you want to keep, a little, uh, keep um, track of anyways in case someone valid is sending you a comment that you want to reply to. Correct. You need to see that and mm -hmm. approve that they can post it if that's how you do your comments and then, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, our system works really well for filtering out the spam versus the legitimate comments. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, comments would end up here so you'd have a number. Mm -hmm. um, and those come from people who are manually just typing stuff into the page, questions or comments or whatever. Um, it recognizes that there's kind of a format for people who are spamming, so it looks for those links out to the, the gold sites or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever uh, storefront that's trying to sell you something. So give me just one second to switch over here and type things correctly. I created a new site for us yesterday, so I just want to show you that. Eventually. This keyboard has been having some issues lately. Okay. <laughs> it's not you. All right. Everyone has used it has been, yeah. Okay, so this is what a library would receive from the back end when we create a new site for them. Let me just show you the end user public side. So it looks almost exactly like the clone mm -hmm. site that I showed you before. It has stuff already included, so they don't have to start necessarily from scratch. Mm -hmm. We assume that everybody's going to need a calendar. They might want a contact page, a kids page, and then just a Nebraska resources page. If the library mm -hmm. doesn't want this stuff, they can always change the name of the pages. They can delete things, add things, and so on. And they can change things from either the back side, which has everything kind of all in one place. You've got all these tools that are available. Or you can work from this side so you can see what you're doing as you go along. Mm -hmm. So if I click on Customize, it tells me what theme I'm running. If I want to change this, I can do it at one click. So let's check out Bota and see how it looks. Uh, 
quite a bit more slimmed out, yeah. I think. Yeah, so back to 2010. Try to change that one more time. And now these things that this gives you are all the ones that you either we already found for libraries to offer them or they've asked to have added to the options. Correct, right. yes. Um, themes and plugins are almost like collections of books. You have to mm -hmm. go in and weed them periodically and add new yes. things. Um, I know they, they become, um, if they're not kept up by whoever has created them, they sometimes things can break. Mm -hmm. And sometimes certain things won't work with what you might want to do, so we don't always allow every single request. Yeah. So if you don't correct. see something here, there's lots of places to find other themes and things. You know, you go find one and then say, Craig, hey, here's one I like. Mm -hmm. Is it something we could possibly yeah, sure. get added? And if there is something that you sort of like but that has issues, we can definitely work around that too. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we can create child themes and you know make all sorts of options and changes to the theme itself. So yeah. if you like it... A lot of them are yeah, customizable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. One thing you'll notice with themes is that they all have different functionality. So if you wanted something in particular, you can find a theme that has that allows you to um, manipulate the margins of the page or that allows you to move images from one side to another. You can also, if you're you know, confident enough, add CSS directly to your site here. Mm. And for people who are brand new, CSS? CSS is basically styling that controls, it's code that controls the look or the position mm. of certain things so it can make an image mm -hmm. bigger, it can move it from the left side mm -hmm. to the right side. So rather than using the just built-in click and drop type things, you're actually doing coding. Right. If you if you know that. Yep. And I've never gotten into that because it's a little too scary for me. Yeah, <laughs> but, I know. And, but I've done like HTML coding, basic website coding, so I'm assuming it's... This is not super, um, yeah. super intensive. What you basically do is find your element on the page. Mm -hmm. I usually do this. So in Firefox, find my little mm -hmm. thing, and then just add some code that changes it. So and you see it tells you there what yep. the different things you'd be doing are. So if I decide I want the border to be something other than this sort of gray color, I could you know just mm -hmm. copy this stuff, put it in my CSS mm -hmm. section, and change it to red or pink or whatever I want to, mm -hmm. to add. Um, you do have the option to add header images, background images, you can do stuff with your menus, and widgets, which are fun. So let me go back to that. So we'll just keep this up on the, the screen here while I mess around. If you guys do have questions, please let me know. Widgets are sort of similar to plugins. They're basically just tools that allow you to do more with your website. We have all sorts of widgets. We have multiple calendars. We have Google Calendar, Google Translator, Pinterest stuff. A text widget, which is kind of like an empty box. You can put whatever you want into it, and that does accept HTML. So mm -hmm. if people wanted to add a Facebook uh, button, that's how we do it. Basically, just go into the text widget, copy the Facebook code, and then it's good to go. Mm -hmm. For now, <clears throat> I'm just going to add a Weather Underground widget to our primary widget area. So this is how the page looks now. Click Add Widget, should be all set, and we'll refresh the page. <laughs> and there it is, the location could not be found. So you do have to put in your zip code or something. You are, yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> And if this takes an exceedingly long time, I'm not going to worry about it. But you see, even with just the simple widget, you have all kinds of different options. Oh, all the different ways you can have it look, too. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. All that just for the weather. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's see how it turned out. There we go. Oh, chance of a thunderstorm. Yeah, it was thundering earlier yeah. this morning, yes. <laughs> it's unfortunate. We've had such nice days. Um, 
So that is basically appearance and some of the things you can do with the sites. We also have basically pages and posts which comprise the content of the site. So pages would be this stuff, calendar, contact, Nebraska resources. And post is something like this Hello World post. Um, when people create a post, they can add all kinds of stuff to it. It doesn't just have to be text. So we have the option to insert slideshow, which is moving images. You'll see a bit of that in a second. You can add media. So if you have photos of an event like a book club or a maker event, you can add those right into a post. Um, you can set a post to publish ahead of time. So if you know that you know, you're going to be closed and you want a post to come out saying we're closed today, you can set it to sort of arrive on that day. You can set a featured image. That's helpful if you're sharing the stuff on Facebook. That means that you'll have a little image from the post that appears mm. on your Facebook page. Um, and you can publicize as well. So you can decide, I want this to go out to Facebook, but I don't want it to go to Pinterest or Twitter. Um, mm. You can control that pretty much on any of the... the and that posts. comes from the Jetpack mm -hmm. that you connect to all of your particular accounts. It does. That's library. great. Yeah. Okay. So... Our site seems to be loading a bit slowly. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, this is our main page. This is pretty much the hub of what we do. So there's all kinds of stuff here. There's online training, a contact page, stuff about participation, and also our participating libraries, which is where I usually direct people who are, you know, seem somewhat interested, mm -hmm. so they can see what other places are doing and mm -hmm. say, I want something like this. That'd be good for um, if you want to ask another librarian how they've what they've done with it. You know, kids, you know how difficult it was. You know, get some tips and ideas from them. <clears throat> I'm sure any of these libraries would be happy to talk to you. <laughs> I, I think they would. And I'm really um, proud of what a lot of our libraries have been doing. A lot of their designs and the stuff that they're putting on their sites have yeah. been just really great. Um, so I want to show you a few of those while I'm at it. Okay, this is Palisade, mm -hmm. and they have a nice oh. slider here at the top. Mm -hmm. um, they include images in their posts. They've got a calendar, so it's a lot of stuff happening here. I see they've also added on the right the links to some of the resources that we provide, mm -hmm. um, in addition to the Nebraska. I mean, that Nebraska resources page, that's something that we pre-fill with um, links to things we do. It like is, over on right. the, um, mm -hmm. the one you set up for Encompass. Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Yep. Um, if it will load. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. It has a list of stuff that they could keep or, you know, mm -hmm. if they don't necessarily want to have pay a ticket and so on, they can always... Yeah. So this is like some default things that we've thought, well, obviously our Nebraska Access, Nebraska Memories, one book, things here, but most commonly possibly useful for a library, mm -hmm. but that can all be tweaked if they want. Like Certainly. Something else. But I see, rather than just having links, Palisade has put in the, um, like, logos from a couple of things that we have. Yeah, it yeah. makes the site pop a little bit. It mm -hmm. makes the stuff stand out, so it's, yeah. in my opinion, a little better than just looking at a list of things. Yeah. Um, so they've been really great with their design. That's Palisade. Okay. North Bend, a different design, as you can see. It's basically, um, they're kind of doing the same thing. They've got their Freegal link here. There's their Overdrive link. They do have a slideshow here at the top, so that's all their posts that they wanted to spotlight. That's hilarious. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and their menu I like is, that they have that slot that where they can click through the different highlighted post there at the top. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It just gives them a little snippet, and then mm -hmm. if they want more, they can go straight to the full post. Mm -hmm. So it's really neat. 
Um, they have a ton of stuff in their menu here, mm -hmm. library policies. Anything you want to know is right there when you load the page. So it's all you know right there at your fingertips. And they always do a lot of images, which I love. Mm -hmm. There's the Facebook thing that I mentioned, Pinterest, green cover books, mm -hmm. and so on. <laughs> And they do have the translate option working as well. So oh, yes. if you have people who don't speak English, you know, who want to mm -hmm. get your content in their language, they can easily do it. Let's see what it looks like in Spanish. Nice. And this is a Google Translate mm -hmm. thing? Yeah, okay. it's just a widget that we include. So any library can take advantage of that. And that's great. Um, there are so many, we've talked to lots of libraries, we've got a lot of um, immigrants coming to Nebraska already here. Sure. Um, and it's even getting even more, so that's awesome. And I know we've got a lot of libraries are working on trying to get them to come into the libraries and use the free resources we have. Yeah, anything that we can do to reach out is probably, you know, for the best, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so that's North Bend. Let's see. Okay, this is another one, Alliance. They chose a different path. Mm -hmm. um, they do have large slides, so basically it's really visual right when you load up the page. You can click through and it gives you some nice mm -hmm. animation. Mm -hmm. There's Thrasinio and the book club. And they do have their menu options right up here at the mm -hmm. top too. So those drop down give you a ton of pages to see. Um, they've got Facebook, their RSS, and um, their contact page here. And they're just extremely focused on those tiles and visuals, so mm -hmm. really neat. Nice. Okay. I like how this one, is, like some of them, lots of WordPress sites by default, they give you, they, I think, kind of urge you put in a header image that's mm -hmm. like at the top and above your name and this is a totally different way it's just the library's name and then below that right off the bat here's your menu and then here's our stuff yeah yeah it really stands out and we have mm -hmm. lots of different options as far as arrangements so some people like to have that header at the top a lot mm -hmm. of our libraries opt for that but then we have other um, structures that they can implement as well so a lot of choices and the last thing that I wanted to show you is uh, one of our mm -hmm. system sites, Three Rivers. And I'm not um, picking favorites. All, all of our <laughs> sites are great. And I should probably Oops. let me go back to this page. I think that they use um, something that's not Three Rivers as their URL. Oh. So. Oh, they did their acronym, TRLS. Yep. Yeah. Um, this isn't necessarily focused totally on overwhelming you with visuals, but it gives you a ton of information, and I love the, mm -hmm. the black and the white for their color scheme. Um, they have all kinds of stuff here in their menu, so anything that you want to know about them is right there. And then if you just scroll down the page, you get Pinterest, you get um, all these posts that have little icons and visuals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different options as far as your look and, and so on for your page. I think that's a good tip. I mean, research, people have been researching this stuff for years. Graphics and images catch people's attention more than just a block of words. Mm -hmm. And also feeding it, as you said earlier, <clears throat> feeding them into your Facebook or Twitter or whatever, including an, a featured image or something that also makes that carry through. Mm -hmm. We'll get people's attention more. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I like it so easy when you're creating a post that the ad media, I, I've done it tons of times for our commission blog, You can all you do is click and drag any pictures, images, whatever you have on your computer, and you can click and drag and drop it right into your post. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we have um, 81 themes basically on our network, and you can choose from those. 
if you are looking for something that's not included, as Krista said, you can always get in touch and we'll definitely accommodate that. Once you do have a site set up, if you go to customize, as I showed you before, you can switch out the theme and try out different things. So if you don't like what you have with 2010, once it loads up, there are all kinds of different options here for you to explore. Kind of cuts everything out with that one. Yeah. <laughs> and some of this stuff, as you can see, was sort of meant for consumer mm -hmm. sites, like shop settings and so on. So. So not under if everything might be useful, to, of, of you know, relevant to you, but you can just ignore it. Yeah, sure, <laughs> just absolutely. The parts that you do like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me show you one other site. So this is Battle Creek. This basically was a library that was using uh, an old theme that was no longer supported. We upgraded mm -hmm. our server and it ended up blocking out some of the things that were on their page. Uh -huh. So this is actually using the same theme that I used for, sorry I can't type today. Mm -hmm. This guy. So this is identical to this, even though it looks different mm -hmm. because of all the CSS that I added. And this changed some of the color and... Yep, yeah. that was it. Um, and it basically looks quite a bit different um, in terms of the color and also the image and so mm -hmm. on. How much space is here at the top compared to that. So you can make all those changes via our site pretty easily. That's not yeah. really a lot of coding to get that difference. No, like the littlest thing can make it totally, your page look totally unique from someone else. So it's not like you have to spend, I know some people are thinking so much time picking colors and themes and designs and ah, I just want my information right. out there. You don't have to, just a couple of tweaks and you're done and then start pushing out the actual info and mm -hmm. what your library your library's resources and programs and events and everything. Absolutely. Um, any questions so far before I move on to uh, nope. If you have any questions, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, Craig can show you anything in any of these um, sites here to, to look at any of the features and how things work. Okay. I know sometimes you can get bogged down. I, I was just going to say, um, I've designed websites that want to design, but you know, some for a commission, some personal ones. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it, you can get really caught up in all the different themes and which one do I really want and spend hours and hours getting lost down that rabbit hole. Right. <laughs> So maybe just simple things is a better way to go, and unless you lose half your morning, you know, trying to decide which color blue do I like here instead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. <laughs> it can be fun, but yeah, yeah, takes work. Yeah, um, if you guys are interested in our page or our service, I would recommend going here, just libraries.ne.gov, and that takes you right to our main blog. Um, I have been sort of adding periodically posts to this page, but essentially you'll want to start up here in the menu. So there's a participation page, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know why we're moving so slowly today. I don't know. <laughs> um, this gives you all the info that you need, explains themes and everything that I've mentioned during the, the program today. Um, tells you about the URL, most of the time it's libraries.ne.gov slash whatever city you're in. Mm -hmm. And then tells you all about the sort of back stuff, uh, back side of things that we do with security and backups and so on. Um, the online training page has tons of videos, and those were basically created by my predecessor, Michael Towers. Um, I've also been working on a beginner's guide here that I'm eventually going to migrate over to the site itself. So that's all mm -hmm. static information. It's just text and images, so you don't necessarily have to watch a whole video to mm -hmm. get um, an answer. 
So these videos were done then, I mean, Michael, it's been a couple of years. Mm -hmm. WordPress has up, updates itself regularly, different Correct. versions. But um, some of those videos, it's still you know what we have, pretty accurate. Yeah, for what uh, for the basics, this is all still good information. Mm -hmm. Posting is still the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's good to know because I know sometimes this happens with our databases that we have issues. With. <laughs> they update their system or update something, and all of our training has is we just throw it out because mm -hmm. they've changed things so much that nothing we've <clears throat> we previously created or trained is is valid anymore. Um, but that's, I think that maybe will make people feel more um, comfortable with WordPress that they won't be suddenly have no clue when something, when it is updated. If, if those were, 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 um, videos are still um, usable, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. The basic structure of WordPress in terms of creating content hasn't really changed. They've more or less mm -hmm. added um, stuff that allow you to tweak your page. They've added new functionality. The CSS is a good example. That was yeah. something that was new with the last WordPress update, so now mm -hmm. I don't have to... Create. But it didn't change what was already there. It was just added on right. to what another way you can work with it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so all that's here. Another thing that I recommend is just go into participating libraries and just look at some of the sites, see what they're doing, and see what you can do. Um, we have a ton of different participants, and they use their site mm -hmm. to varying levels. Some people are on there multiple times a day. Some people post once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on how much time you have and what you want to do with your page. Mm -hmm. And what you have going on at your library, how much you need to be updating. Yeah, and what I also like, I know some people, this and Facebook and Twitter, having to, another place where I've got to promote and post and remember to do something. I love that all of those things, and specifically talking about um, WordPress, have the um, scheduling a post, and you had mentioned that before, you can post immediately or you can sp specify, I want to go out on this date at this time. Mm -hmm. So you can like block off like a, an hour or something, a couple hours in the morning on Monday to create all of your posts for the week that will then just automatically post for you as that date comes up rather than have to remember every day I gotta go in and do something. You don't. You just gotta pick one day and get it all in there and then just let it do its own thing. Yeah, it makes it much more convenient. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to update your header there. It says more than fifty libraries. You uh, said there's a hundred <laughs> something now. <laughs> yeah, I I've really been thinking about that. I'm gonna have to <laughs> uh, fire up the GIMP program and do my little Photoshop thing. Is that that is? That's a graphic that was created, so it's not. That's not just text that we can change. I guess mm -hmm. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I don't know either. Let's try. <laughs> I think it's a graphic. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that. Oh wow, it's not. Okay, oh, so let's change it. it. Look right here. Live changing. Save and publish. I thought it looked like a thing that had been created too. Wow. Yeah, I just assumed. I guess that was my That's mistake. Yeah. So thanks, Chris. <laughs> you learned. See, you learned something new. We fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, if anyone watching is interested in participating, there's a contact page here. You can send me a message. You can always give me a call as well. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you and go over, you know, what we can do and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. My phone number's right here on the page, mm -hmm. and they do make you. Prove you're not a robot. Right, you have to do some math, <laughs> which is uh, a bummer, but yeah. That's why I went into librarianship. There wasn't supposed to be math. Yeah, I know. Mm. So, anybody have any questions? Anything more you want to know? Um, beyond what I keep asking. No. <laughs> I yeah. may be like jumping in and doing asking the questions for people, but... That's fine. <laughs> I could ask you some questions. Me? Yeah. Okay. You um, use WordPress to uh -huh. create your site for the conference every year. Big Talk from Small oh, Libraries. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, Big Talk from Small Libraries. Yeah. How difficult do you find it to work with Post and do some of this design stuff for the page? Um, it's been pretty easy. Um, for doing the posts, that's you know the same as what we do on our site. Mm -hmm. um, but you, Craig, you've helped me out with some of the things. Um, that that slider theme that that one library had, we switched to that one for Big Talk as well, which I thought was really cool. And actually, I think I was even able to. I had you do that first, but then I went in and on myself and like switched some of them around. And I just 
I'm kind of a brave person when it comes to online things, which may be good or not good, depending on what I do. But I just went in there, you know, once once Craig had said, here's this theme that is different and put in the pictures of the li our local libraries in there. I just went in the next year and started, like, poking around in things. I said, well, is there somewhere I can change it? What can I do on my own? And I was able to take out a page and put in a new one and update it. Um, And we move things into, we have archives in there, we have to keep moving things one page to another and figuring out the hierarchy of the pages. Yeah, it takes a little and bit of thought, but it's it, not really that hard. No, it takes some thought and planning, and um, for this kind of thing that's just an annual, it's a one time a year, we have a lot of activity, mm -hmm. usually around from November through March is when everything's happening. So right now the page is just sitting out there, but all the recordings are there. Um, yeah, I've not had much, and that was one that I did more design work on. Yeah, as far as how it sets up, the, our commission web, our commission blog is done on WordPress. I just post, post to that, which is a simple thing. Um, yeah, that would be it there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you can see the sliders. It's got the libraries. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and those are all pictures of libraries, small libraries here in Nebraska, that our staff has gone out over the years. Some of them might be old pictures, but they were taken at our libraries. <laughs> Um, and the uh, menu basically accommodates pretty much all those old conferences. So yeah, and we just keep adding to mm -hmm. the um, previous conferences over there. We have to update our date for next year. I'm not yes. sure. Haven't really confirmed, but usually it's the last Friday in February. So shoot for that. <laughs> so that will be updated at some point. Now that there, I have. Because you had mentioned using GIMP to create mm -hmm. images. That's right. a, um, GIMP is like a free version of uh, Photoshop. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I've had you do because I don't. That's the one thing like creating actual images. I know you do that. Alana has sometimes. That's a kind of above my. Yeah. Well, I'm not great artist <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much the extent of what yeah. I can do in GIMP. But it is helpful to have it. Mm -hmm. um, and. For a lot of our libraries that are trying to manipulate their images or they want something in their header, I always recommend GIMP and another mm -hmm. program called Urban View to help them shrink mm -hmm. things down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they can just grab a little portion of a photo and stick it right in their header, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing people see on their page. Um, they can clean up things with GIMP automatically. They can mm -hmm. make it look a little more artistic. Like yeah. You guys can see that it has kind of a watercolory. Mm -hmm. look. Yeah, we did some, I know you did some manipulation of some of the pictures that we had. Little different from just the snapshot. Yep. Um, no, I've had a lot of. I actually kind of find it fun. I like the creative and, and, and picking things. This, this site I've done every year. Um, years ago, I also worked on 2011, 2012, our um, technology planning conference that we did is on here as well. And um, it's not as advanced as this one because it was a few years ago. Sure. But you know, there was the design and what color schemes we can use and um, and and whatnot. So yeah, but on the whole, I think it's pretty easy. Oh um, yeah. You know, I mean, we didn't have this slider before. We had just a static picture. There was just a header picture like mm -hmm. before, and. Um, Two or three years ago, I said, I want to do something different. Is there some way we can incorporate more of our libraries? You know, Big Talk is for all public libraries across the country, but I wanted to, you know, give a little shout out to ours. Sure. And so um, Craig came up with this as an option, and I was like, Oh, that's cool. Can we do that? And yeah. And it's been, and I've like I've had, um, yeah. Right now, there's a page that I take on and off from here actually regularly. The um, uh, submit a proposal mm -hmm. and registration. Oh, registration's there still, um, but that's closed down. But um, there's a um, page and a slider thing that will come out when we first um, look for new speakers. We put a call out, um, and so I'm able to add that into there just from the customized behind the scene. And um, what's cool is you don't have to recreate it every time. You just um, either hide it or just, but it still saves it in your. WordPress back end, I guess, mm -hmm. and then you just make it live again, and then you make it, you know, not public, that's what it is, public or unpublic, and it just right. saves it, so that's, you know, so things like that that you're only doing on, you know, summer reading, 
you only do that once a year. That That's might be something mm -hmm. you might put on and take off of your website because you don't want people looking for summer reading stuff in you know December um, of if current events or things you know so that you can you can really make your site um, it's totally not static where you're adding and taking off things like that and full on pages depending on when things go on and it's just so easy yeah yeah that's what I really love about WordPress it gives you a lot of power but you don't necessarily have to do the old thing of like looking at code or starting from scratch and just I'm gonna be here all day typing this HTML yeah. and maybe, uh, make something happen it's more or less mm -hmm. just a one-click kind of thing I did start when we and I first came here oh gosh what did we use in my previous job, maybe we used Dreamweaver or something. Wow. Way, way old, yeah. I've been around for a while. Oh, <laughs> and we used something else here that it was doing coding, and it was a lot more difficult to update things on the website. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, I can't even remember what it was that I used here, but uh, it was painful, and it was something you set up a page, and you did it once, and you said, it is what it is, and don't ask me to do anything else. And now, on the fly, you can make a quickie change, um, whether it's a word like this is a full on WordPress site on our library commission page we have a WordPress blog embedded into a site that's right. run um, we use Microsoft Expression Web to update it um, part of that is like the header thing dictated by the state of Nebraska we have things we have to do um, but that center part there that's WordPress mm -hmm. built into something else yeah yep. and both of those are actually pretty easy to work with Yeah, I really like having you, and I have, because um, we have Big Talk. What else do we do? I do one there regularly. This. Well, everything else was old stuff that we don't. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> well okay. the technology sure. planning thing that we did, yeah. The technology planning um, sessions that we did, that's still out there. Mm -hmm. um, we had a Nebraska Learns 2.0 program that we did on WordPress, um, which ended a few years ago as well. Um, I did, I, for anyone who you guys know, I got married last year and I did my wedding website on WordPress. Did you really? Did. Yeah, wow. why not? That's great. I, I, I bought a, 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 a domain uh -huh. and I know WordPress from work. Why the heck wouldn't I? Yeah, <laughs> so super easy. I just did my own personal, you know, I was going to say quickie, but it wasn't because, yeah, I spent a lot of time figuring out themes and colors and <laughs> I don't even want to go into it. Sure. Um, and having to have my husband's input as well, because it's our site. Um, but um, yeah, I just did that personally. And... Yeah. Um, I think that's really one of the, the strongest arguments for using WordPress. Um, it's basically, it's you can do whatever you want within reason. I mean, we can't uh, yeah. have some sort of animated virtual reality thing come shoot out at you or something, yeah. but easily. But, you know. And, and the thing about the big talk that I was that I just thought of, a, mm -hmm. like I said, I do this once a year. So once it's over, like you see that my last post was in March, that's pretty much it. The so the workshop, the conference is over, the recordings are available, there's not much else to do for it until the next year comes around. Mm -hmm. On the commission site, I mainly just do posts. I don't do website design through it because that's not my thing, I don't need to. Um, but I can come back to this in the fall again in November when I start up again and it's really easy to just pick it up. I haven't been in there with moving around the pages and putting up the call for proposals one and changing and taking down the registration and moving all the speaker pages over and I can jump into it months later having not touched it and I still know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't change too much as I was saying the posting and sort yeah. of the basics of WordPress stays the same so you'll never really be caught off guard no. by that I'm not usually thing. scared about going back into it again right. <laughs> when I haven't touched it in a while. Yeah. Um, any questions? Sorry no. to keep asking. No, that's okay. No, no, nobody does. Does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to ask of Craig? We've got about 10-ish uh, minutes mm -hmm. left officially of our hour. Um, if you want to know anything about WordPress, about what the commission's doing with it, um, anything about your sites, anybody on here um, have? Um, let's see, you can tell me if any of these libraries actually are using ours. Um, we have Imperial. I don't know if Imperial's on the list. I don't know right up hand. I think they are. Um, Polk, Hosh Memorial.
Oh, actually, there it is. Yeah, leave yep. material. Yep. And you said pull. Yep. Yep. Oh, and Beth just says, thank you. We'll be working on fixing our page. Oh, fixing. Lead Imperial, it needs some. I don't know what it needs <laughs> fixing. I don't know if she wants us to show it or not. We don't have okay, to, Beth. That's fine. <laughs> um, I know some people, at the, some libraries have been keeping it more. Some we've had, have, um, it's hard to keep up with everything. It I've is. Been, yeah. been able to keep up to date in it, but not a problem. Um, get into it when you can. If anyone is considering WordPress and is you know not from Nebraska or you know somewhere remote, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend doing it. I do think that you need to be aware of what I said before: weeding, clearing out things. We actually mm -hmm. just recently went through and got rid of a bunch of our old plugins to hopefully make the site run a little faster. Apparently, it did too. We had some real slowdowns. Um, our Bernard Hiba guy was telling us that it made a difference. Yeah. So just like your library, you got to read this. <laughs> right, exactly. But the benefits compared to the work that you have to put in um, is, you know, it's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. um, Beth says they just haven't upgraded to the new format. Oh, okay. That's all. Just so many things to do in a day. Yes. <laughs> Understandable. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, so as Craig was saying, um, this is our Nebraska program. So mm -hmm. this is just for Nebraska and only for public libraries um, that we offer it for. Um, I think the big key too, it's free. Um, you don't have to pay for any hosting or um, server or the domain or anything. Um, do some libraries, I thought there were some that they do have their own domain. You said it, generally it's in a libraries.ne.gov slash your library's name. Right. But if they want to for some reason or if they already have uh, their own domain, there's a way to Right, they can point, that. point their okay. visitors to the new site. Okay. It's like, excuse me, my voice is breaking. <laughs> um, yeah, they, if they have, you know, townlibrary.com or something, mm -hmm. they can always check their hoster and, and point to yeah, the, the new is, page. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So free, WordPress, easy, lots of training. If you don't already have a website through us, there's more than 100 public libraries in Nebraska. I it's do know official. that. <laughs> yes. We've got 250, 60, 70. The number is up for debate also of how many and ones that come and go and whatnot. But um, yes. yeah, there's, there's a lot more out there. So um, if you're looking for a website, come to us and we can get you there for free. Yeah, we definitely appreciate any interest. If you have any questions, mm -hmm. feel free to ask. All right. Well, nobody's typed in anything desperately they need to know right now, so I assume we'll get lots of calls later. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Up. All right. So uh, thank you very much, Greg. Yeah, I wanted to. You know, we haven't had anything. I actually went back and looked. It's been a while since we've had anything about the program on um, Encompass Live, so I knew it was due um, to get people, you know, reminded about some of the things that we um, do here. So um, that will wrap it up for today's show. I'm going to actually here. Do, um, we'll have you do this. Type in Encompass Live in your search here. Um, Encompass Live is online, of course. And so far, and I keep saying this, and someday it's going to not be true. We're the only thing called that. So if you Google us, which is what he just did, Encompass Live is what comes up first. Our main page and a whole bunch of other things that are all us. Um, so you can go here to see um, what's coming up in our um, schedule. Uh, the show has been recorded, as I said, and will be available here on our archived sessions page, right beneath our upcoming shows. And here's uh, last week's show was from UNL Extension, and we had we pretty much the same thing. View recording will be here. We post our recordings up to our Library Commission YouTube account. Presentation, the slides we'll put in our slide share that we have, and links, which really is just the link to this program page. So I'll just link that here. Um, actually, I think I have it in the description. So, so you have all that information for you probably um, today or tomorrow, I'll say. <laughs> uh, depends on how YouTube and the different services cooperate with my need to upload them. Um, so that's where the recording will be. And everyone who attended or registered today, you'll, say, you'll get an email automatically from me letting you know that the recording is available for you. Um, so that'll be today's show. I hope you join us for next week when our top topic is binge boxes, boovy bags. 
book box binge, makerspace kids, and more. Yeah, it's a hard title to say. I didn't write it. <laughs> Natalie Bazan, who's from, who was in um, Michigan, um, she's the director of both Hopkins District and Door Township Libraries. She's moved on to another library since then. But when she was at those libraries, she had this presentation about um, lots of kits that they have. Um, collection, I believe movie bags is movies that are made into books, and you get both the book and the movie in a, in a, together to take home. You know, so like a book club kit with a whole bunch of books, but it's a combo thing. I think that's what that's supposed to be. Um, but anyway, she'll explain. <laughs> um, she's actually been a regular. Speaking of big talk from small libraries, she's been on, on big talk from small libraries at least once, maybe a couple of times. And this is actually a session that she she submitted um, to this year's conference. Um, but we had way too many submissions to fit into one day, mm -hmm. and I did not have the energy to do a more than one day conference. Understandable. Run a whole. Thing. Um, so uh, many of those I have invited on to Encompass Live because there's really good presentations, but we only had you know like eight hours to, that we could put things in. So um, that's what she'll be on the show this next week, next week, um, and you can sign up for that and any of our other shows that we've got coming up. I've got May up here, and I'm working on things for June and July. So as I get those confirmed, they'll be added to the schedule. So keep checking back. Um, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. As you can see here, and we've got our Facebook uh, link. Um, so if you are big on Facebook, yeah, it's 11 o'clock, <laughs> you can go over here and like our page, we don't want to log in right now, and you will get notifications of when shows are happening, here's a reminder to log into today's show if you wanted to, um, posting about the upcoming shows when the recording is available, so um, if you are big on Facebook, give us a like over there and get notifications of what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps up for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. And um, we will see you. I'm going to double check and make sure there's no desperate. No, okay, questions. All right. <laughs> Always make sure. I've missed some before. I forgot. Um, so thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.